All right, how's it going? We're back. We're back with part two of the NVMe heatsink saga. I'm going to answer a lot of questions and concerns. We're going to show some benchmarks. We're going to show some data. And then I'm going to show you the install process from start to finish. And I'm going to make it as easy and as painless as possible. The only thing you're going to need for this is a screwdriver, one of these chonky boys, and some thermal pads. And the cost is going to be very, very cheap. And I have a bag of these bad boys, so if you stay tuned to the end, I think you'll enjoy what I'm going to tell you. So, spoiler alert, the copper one, it's junk. Don't waste your money on this. This was my prototype heatsink right here. So I took one of these right here. These are very long, um, thick heat sinks right here, but the problem is it definitely is not going to fit. So what I did is I took it, I cut it down. A lot of people were asking me, you know, what, why did I have this silver? Did I uh, flatten it out or anything like that? No, it's actually still, it's actually still exactly um, 10 millimeters right here. The thickness of that is exactly the same as that. So no worries there, didn't decrease any thickness. So. When I found out that they made this, I instantly ordered it. I had used this for about a week testing and I had really good results with it. It actually drops about 15 plus degrees Celsius off of every test from gaming average temperature test all the way up to stress test and even downloading games on Steam. So if you actually look at the normal operating temperature range of these things, you'll be kind of shocked. Most motherboards come with a heatsink, right? Most motherboards have a heatsink for the NVMe. There's a reason they run hot. So I think it was just a design oversight. The Asus didn't include one. Um, also the 512s don't run as hot as like the one or two terabytes. So if you're running a stock drive, you might not need it. Um, it need is a strong word that offends people, but I, I honestly think that if something is going to help you in life, it's just like a life jacket, you go into the water, you wear a life jacket, but you don't need to wear a life jacket. Same thing with an NVMe heatsink. You don't need it, but man, I tell you, it'll it'll help you out in the long run. So these are just showing different heat sinks that they've tested, and it really just goes into explaining everything of why you need one. There's several other websites that reference the operating temperature range is zero to 70. We look here, it's a storage review for the Sabre Rocket. The operating temperature is zero to 70. Even Linus Tech Tips forums, they all talk about if you run it over the recommended temperature, you're going to decrease the life substantially. So first of all, we're going to get into the benchmarks. And this is the program I use. I use HW Info. It's a free system utility. You download it and basically I'll, I'll have another video if you want to see exactly how to set it up. But it's pretty straightforward and you can see everything from your GPU temps to um, you know your your SSD temps, you, you can see memory usage, oh, you can see everything. So let's get back into why I recommend these, okay? All right, so the first slide we're gonna look at is going to be Crystal Dismark. Now, this is a drive benchmark utility that is pretty industry standard across the board when you're going to test drives. This is going to give you the speed test and also it's gonna give you um, the ability to kind of stress your drive so you can know what's going on. I used hardware info in the background to log the temperatures. That way I know exactly what they can reach up to. Now, the speed test actually did differ between the raw drive with no uh, heat sink and the Chonky Boy by, you know, uh, about five to 10% or so. It, it was probably about yeah, between five and 10%, actually, when it hit that thermal limit, it, it dropped it a little bit. So they're rated like 5,200 is what it was getting with the Chonky Boy, and it was getting about 5,000. So I mean, it's, it's a little difference, but it might get worse over time if you just keep running it that hot. So right here, you can see Raw Dog, the controller got up to 92C, and the memory temperature got up to 70C, both well above the normal operating temperature range, so I highly don't suggest running it at that. Even with the Copper Boy, we dropped about two degrees, and then the Chonky Boy, we got it down to 74C on the controller, and that was the peak temperature. That was not the average, but that's the peak. And so for a controller at 74, that's acceptable. We lowered it by 18C. Now, 
53C, that's definitely, definitely okay right here for a, a benchmark and stress test on that memory. We dropped it by 25 degrees Celsius. And here's the final slide right here, the one that everybody's been waiting for. What will it do while you're gaming? Well, if you look here, you get about 18C reduction from just the raw dog. I think that is huge. That is a big gain. It gets it well below those thermal limits. It gets it well within the acceptable range. You're only hitting 61C on the NVMe controller, and that memory is running very cool at 44C. And that was the peak. There were some instances where it was running at like 40 and 41C on the memory. So you actually might even run this cooler, especially on like 15 watts or 20 or 25 watts. I was running this at the max. Every slider maxed out, 30 watt, manual, everything. I, I think you could probably get these numbers down even more with this heat sink, but this is just what's the worst it could do kind of thing putting it at the the worst stress test possible basically so anyways i think that proves about everything so now let's get into the install process all right so let's get into how i do this i'm going to make it as easy and as painless as possible the device is turned off i i, I do recommend if you want to unplug the battery go for it but if you're pretty careful i don't think there's a huge need i don't think you'll um i don't think you'll run into any issues i don't think you're going to drop it I, I trust you i trust you all right so first of all, all you need is a screwdriver go ahead and remove your back plate the screws are kind of long if you've already installed a new nvme drive i'm sure you're very familiar with it all right so here's what i do First of all, this is the the like, you could try this first and if it doesn't work, then go for the other method. But I'll actually reference it right here. Um, if I can get it, it's a little tricky. Actually, you know what? No, we're, we're gonna go for the easy method. So you can try placing it and then try putting the cover on, but some people are gonna run into um, a little bit of a clearance issue if you don't reference it perfectly. This little hole right here is what's going to kind of allow this to set in and not move. So you take that second to the last pin, you drop that in like that. And if you notice it, it can't move up or down or left or right. So that's pretty locked in here. When you put it back together, it's going to be gently resting against this and it's going to allow it to breathe through this panel so air is going to come in and it's going to pass through this heat sink and it's going to cool it off that's why it works so well the copper mods all tucked up under there you don't really have any airflow hitting it it's just too low in the drive and it gets heat soaked by everything else it and then it can heat soak into your your uh, heat pipe as well if you're hitting higher temperatures i actually have noticed lower temperatures on my apu that could just be me but hey let's get into it so first of all you put that bad boy in there like that use a one millimeter pad the pads i'm using are these g lid nabs they're the exact same pad buy whatever is cheaper people ask me what's the best pad these are the best pads um, don't use the thermal grizzly pads. They're very brittle. They don't have much stick to them and they're very dry and they're better under pressure, like a lot of pressure, like for water blocks and stuff like that. Um, I just don't think they're good for this solution right here. As far as thermal conductivity goes, these do 15. I think these are highly rated and recommended. I've got several resources if you want to debate me on it that I can, I can share with you. So we have heat sink just like so we'll actually lay this down flat we'll take our ally and we'll make sure that we reference the screw holes and we hold it exactly straight we don't want to tilt it we don't want to angle it so you want to make sure it's still there i want to put it just like that and boom go ahead and give it a click flip it lay it down give it a tap 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 a -roo, boop it whatever you want to do just tap 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 then you come over here, you pop these out, and then boom, check it out. Now, don't skip this step, okay? Because you need to still press it down to make sure that thermal pad sticks. Don't spin it, don't twist it. Now that you've done that, you can put it right back together. Bada bing, bada boom. Wanna make sure that you're doing it carefully and doing it slowly, that way you don't twist this and get it off kilter. But you wanna make sure that you're referencing that pen, make sure it gets in there just right, put it back in there, boom. You're good to go. So the next thing I want to tell you is that I really, really, really strongly believe that this mod 
is going to prolong the life of your drive. If you don't believe it, that's fine. That's your prerogative. But I don't think that this is doing it any justice. And I don't think raw dogging a Gen 4 drive is worth it either because these temperatures are getting very toasty. Your APU is next to it, and that could be heat soaking as well. You got all that heat up in there just drooling into that device. After gaming temperatures and stuff, it got pretty toasty. You know, I showed you the benchmarks earlier of what it was getting while average gaming temps and I really just uh, can't speak more highly about this mod. So I hope everyone tries it. If you have any questions or comments or uh, anything like that, let me know. If you hit me up in the Discord, uh, definitely let me know. You watch to the end and uh, tell me your, your favorite part or tell me what you think about it. Just, you know, tell me, tell me something. And we'll go from there, you know. I might have a few extras left by the time you message me. The last thing I would like to do is actually go over an article for all the OGs who stuck around to the end. I actually got featured. This was exciting. I didn't even know about this, but I actually got featured on Tweaktown. It's a major um, tech publication that publishes articles and things like that. So I was right about the SD card reader and the power delivery system being mostly the primary heat source and a lot of the issues. I'm sure a lot of you will know who've been following the channel that this screenshot looks awfully familiar, doesn't it? Look at that, CPPC Tech, that's me! And another screenshot and a link to my video. So thank you, Tweak Town. Much, much love. I, I really adore your website and your publication and your informative knowledge. I follow you guys many years and I can't believe I missed this article completely until today when I just randomly went to Tweak Town and was <laughs> searching for any kind of articles about the micro SD card reader because I wanted to share something on here. I am absolutely shocked. That was a very nice surprise for the day. I really appreciate it. Um, if anyone has any questions, comments or anything like that, let me know if there's something you want to see in the next video. The next video, we're going to be talking about a number of things. We're going to be talking about the VRAM, and the RAM, and then we're also going to make a video about 3D printing your own accessories and, um, you know, maybe try to get some more people into 3D printing. I actually found this really exciting. I found it fairly easy once I got the hang of it. It's not an expensive, it, it's not an expensive hobby to get into. I've already printed multiple ones of these. The stock dock or uh, stand is absolutely dog water and it, it failed on me after a week as you can see here this thing stands up good it's very sturdy i've been enjoying this this thing is is awesome and then we installed these buttons on the back right here and you can see like the texture and all that stuff looks really uh reminiscent of the original texture and i even printed the port cover man this thing is just it's it's turning out to be a monster i love this device i've had it since launch day if you run your device at the most optimal situation you you try to tune your games you try to keep your temps in check you try to make sure everything that you do is you know as good as it can get i think you'll get a lot of enjoyment and a lot of life out of this device um i think it's going to age very well other than possibly the ram issue but i have seen some people overseas actually uh soldering uh ram to this they're desoldering the modules and resoldering new modules so i'm excited to see that um, I'll be first in line if somebody in America wants to do that. I'll gladly let you guinea pig my device and I'll pay you to do it. Um, however, I would just uh, you know be, be a little hesitant, but I, I would do it. I, I definitely would want to do that to my device. I would go for the 32 or the 64 gig. I honestly need more RAM in a lot of my games because Forza, uh, for example, you will run out of memory if you have the VRAM set to anything more than four gigs in certain instances. You'll get a notification saying that your, your memory is low. If you set the VRAM too low, then you might get a notification saying that your VRAM is low. So Forza Horizon 5 is a little mixed bag for some people. I think ETA Prime and a few other YouTubers as well uh, ran into this issue. So just kind of have to tinker around with that modern warfare the sweet spot for the vram is between four and six 
Uh, it doesn't really make much difference. But if you start getting into eight gigs of VRAM, then you can increase stuttering and worse 1% lows, as other YouTubers have confirmed as well. Those 1% lows suffer because you're hitting the page file back and forth and you don't actually have that high speed memory available. Your storage is definitely slower than your memory. So if you're having to use a virtual memory file called the page file, you're gonna struggle with some FPS numbers on those 1% lows. All right. Well, with that, I'm gonna get on out of here and try to get this video edited out. I have recorded this thing probably 400 times. I try to do my stuff with a one take and I think I got it this time. So with that, I hope all of y'all have a good afternoon, good evening or good night.